Hi everyone, how's everyone doing? Hi Patrick, everyone doing okay? We had some technical difficulties today. Give me a why if you guys could hear me clearly. <clears throat> Hope everyone had a great weekend. Didn't withdraw too much. So no football. Okay, so I want to start off with the dollar. Dollar is bouncing, kind of a grinding maybe C wave after this was diagnosed here on Thursday. We had this big bounce, higher low I talked about, a higher low on Friday. You could have been long here with stops under the low. Continues to grind up. And the leader to the downside is cable. Okay, so this is almost looking corrective, like we could have another bounce from here. Maybe just an ABC back at support. So if you uh, felt like you missed the pound when it was 43 and a half, you're back at support right now. I'm looking for some uh, volatile action into Tuesday and Wednesday. Of course, we have the Fed, we have the State of the Union, and don't forget we have a lunar eclipse. S&Ps are giving up a little ground here. I think it was Blake who said they topped between 70 and 80 when he showed a formation on Friday. So, so far, so good. Maybe we get one more rally into Tuesday, Wednesday, and the RSI could stay under the 70 level. Uh, last week, I said I thought the crude had topped, and then that was in here. Right now, it's looking like a failing rally. Crude looked heavy to me. I think it's vulnerable, especially if the dollar rally continues, but I'd still like to see maybe one more shot down in the dollar, although we had a divergence. I guess if we get through 89.60, you're going to have to be looking for 90.80. So I wouldn't be short the dollar here. There were better opportunities to buy it. People go, well, Dale, what's on the menu today? I know you said this here. And I know you said this here, but what about now? Well, you know what? This was a time to do it. This was another chance to do it. Now the risk increases a bit. So every day I, there aren't great entries. And today for me is another one of those days. So Thursday, Friday was, today I don't know. So uh, that's about it, I'm a little, uh, frazzled from trying to get the room open this morning. I'm going to turn it over to Blake. See uh, see what he has to say. Uh, who in here listened to his week ahead video? One other thing I want to point out before I do hand it over to Blake is look at the VIX, okay? We have all these blow-offs happening in all the indices except the Russell, and the VIX is trading 12, okay? Normally it'd be 10, normally be eight, uh, it's so close I could taste it. And in fact, I talked to Peter Goodburn, who's gonna be with us uh, Wednesday, who really called it, even he underestimated it. I thought he was crazy when he said 2760, when we were trading 2200 last spring. Uh, but even he, it's gonna be great to see him. He was keen at high off of a number on the Bovespa, that was hit on Friday. Just a little insider hint for you guys. So let's have a great week. I'm not sure about my guest today. Uh, he hasn't responded to me. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to Blake and uh, maybe he has more clarity than I do. I'm just, a, I'm just the host anyway. Good morning, Dale. Hi, Blake. Hey, can you how hear me? Good. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah. Hey, you know, um, as far as as far as the dollar, I mean, this has been a pretty pretty slow open uh, for the market. We've seen the dollar bounce a little bit, but we're we're going in a month end. And uh, good point. Most, most guys that I most guys that I talk to are expecting dollar selling to stay pretty pretty heavy in the month end. Um, and 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 you know, after we get past month end, do you know what's ha happening this week? A lot. Don't we have, uh, we have, well, the State of the Union, I think we have Fed minutes. Oh, yeah, we have, we have the, we have the Fed, we have the uh, Janet Yellen's last Fed meeting. 
um, which oh, is going to be, be yeah, which is going to be on Wednesday. And then we have, um, you know, we have uh, uh, the State of the Union. We have NAFTA negotiations wrapping up today. Um, tomorrow so a lot, lot of a lot of things that are happening um that can move the the market and um the dollar has been pounded you know obviously going into uh going into all of this and going you know considering that it's month end going into wednesday um you know the 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 dollar could try to find a foothold after the uh the last fed meeting you know, and the the Fed might might actually be able to be. They might even um, feel that they could be a little bit more hawkish since the dollar has been beat down so much, and the dollar could, and indeed maybe try to turn if it's going to turn, or at least get a bounce uh, after Wednesday. And so um, I guess the, the 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 thing is is that you got to be a little you know a little wary of trying to uh, try to play the dollar to the to the long side too aggressively ahead of that. If that if that makes any sense to you guys, it does. You know, a lot of a uh, lot of red events, and that month end point is very good. So uh, Thursday is the beginning of the new month. So maybe Wednesday, some type of inflection point. I'd like to see one more low in the dollar to go for it personally. Yeah, so, and, and we might see that. I mean, you, you look at the euro dollar, and you, you know the euro. You know, we broke out of a little bit of a triangle here, but you know I. I, I can't imagine that the euro is going to, at this point in time, come under too much pressure. We might see – here, let me grab this trend line here. I don't know why that trend line's not going – oh, it goes all the way through. That's why. It's, it's at the same, the same as my 200-period 200 200 moving average here. Um, but the the dollar index might you know might come under you know might bounce a little bit. But you know what are we looking at of the euro? Maybe a move down to you know. 123 what is this 12350 or so you know uh, and then 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 we're probably going to bounce i don't think there's a whole lot of downside in the euro the pounds uh showed some weakness this morning the pounds been under some pressure and um you know i mean we've seen a little bit of a bounce we've had the the aussie under some pressure the the kiwis under a little bit of pressure uh the canadians round a little bit the 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 dollar peso is rallying a little bit so the dollar is making a bit of a move um you can see the dollar index but again it's it's like well how much upside how much upside do we have here ahead of all these key events going into this week um i, I think if you're looking to play the dollar for more more of a significant bounce you probably have to wait for you know the wednesday um you know post fomc the dollar might actually you know might be able to show a little bit of life i think that's that's entirely possible. So, um, you know, uh, if 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 you're just imagining like what the dollar might do for the next, you know, couple of days, I'm assuming it's going to stand or some pretty good pressure. Um, but if you're if you're short the dollar, you got to be on the defensive. You know, this is the this is the time that I think you guys should all be on the defensive if you're short the dollar, just because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to let those profits erode if you've been short the dollar you know in recent weeks um but initiating initiating new dollar uh new new fresh dollar shorts you got to be a little careful with at this point it, you know we've had such a big decline in the dollar index um and we hit really key support and, it, and if if you guys didn't see like the, this um here let me go to a four hour chart kind of like um what what we hit is like major confluence here uh there's this little 261 percent extension um from this last minor consolidation last week okay we hit a 161 percent extension of this move you can see this move right here um that that's of the the, the actual flag then we had the 618 retracement which is a really, you know, obviously a key key technical level um, from the 2014 to 2016 move. So we hit a really big confluence of support in the dollar, and you know, we, we're we're already starting to show a little bit of a uh, little bit of life. But I, I think to get a more meaningful bounce out of the dollar, you're you're talking um, we have to get past Wednesday. I think you know, like I said, the 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 end of 
the end of month dollar flows are probably going to be fairly negative just because we've seen such a, 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 a you know, a big down move the whole month of January and into, into the uh, end of last year that we're probably going to see some continuation of that going into the next couple of days as, as, as institutions, um, you know, get, continue to, to, to liquidate any dollar positions. But I think it's after Wednesday that we, we might have a more significant bounce. But, you know, overall, the, the, uh, the, the, the market action has been pretty quiet overnight. We've, um, you, you mentioned something, Dale, about the S&P. Uh, and and I'm, I'm going to make sure that everybody sees this. This is um, a pretty big development, in my opinion. Um, the, the, we have an equal leg move in the S&P. Now, yeah, you called that on Friday, Blake. You said about we could go to 8, 880, 880. 2880, so was, yeah. That was a great level. Well, thanks. We we actually came really close. We went to twenty eight seventy six, and 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 the you might you might go well. Well, Blake, why why don't you measure from the very bottom here, following the financial crisis? And the reason why I didn't is because this spike low right here was very significant. If you guys don't know why it was so significant, this was the um, flash crash low that we had in stocks back in two thousand eleven. And if uh, it was a really wild day, actually, if you weren't um, if you weren't there, I, but b believe it or not, I was actually short the S and P, and I got out on the spike lower because I, I it was it was really quite amazing. But that wasn't it wasn't that wasn't the actual low. The low was a couple of weeks later, um, or maybe like a month or a month and a half later. Excuse me. I got the Monday yawns, and we spiked lower, and then then uh, hit a, a brief new low, and then reverse from there. But that that reversal, um, I marked that as the low because we had such aggressive spikes down there, and and so we have an equal move. Now I don't know if the S and P is going to hold this particular you know resistance. It's just we are at resistance, and you can see how we're we're struggling. Now we we actually raced up there on on uh, on Friday. Um, you know, Friday afternoon, surprisingly, uh, you know, when the market wasn't looking, we just continued to race into new highs and came really close to that resistance. And um, now, you know, obviously we're stalling here, but I, I don't think you, you, you can really write off the S&P until after, you know, we break through channel support. And that, that may happen, you know, this week. It may, may happen two months from now as we continue to, to forge. But um, but if you guys are bearish stocks, I wouldn't be, you know, not, not, not yet. You know, you got, you got to wait till we start seeing some, uh, you know, like a channel break here, I think would be pretty important. And then that, that, that to me, if, if we broke the channel, which uh, the S and P that's about 15 S and P points, it's not too far away. Um, but, you know, we also, since the beginning of the year, we haven't seen any meaningful pullbacks either. So um, the market's been pretty much straight up. But if we if we break through that channel support, I think you can you you can you know probably look at that as being a near term market high that was posted this morning. And um, then at that point in time, you can start you know start looking for a little bit more two way action, which I think is important because uh, us as traders, you know, I always get asked by I always get asked by people. Um, you know, hey, you know, the mar the stock market's going crazy. You must be making a killing. And I'm like, no, it's actually really quite difficult um, when you're not trading the stock market and you're trading, um, you know, periphery markets like the, the currency market. When you have a one-way price action in the stock market, it makes the FX market, you know, very difficult to trade. Precious metals, commodities uh, typically are going to be a little bit tougher to trade because you have, you know, everybody's it's like a polarizing move in stocks where the fx market correlations can't take hold um it, you know as, as you guys have you know seen very you know very easily especially if you just trade predominantly fx or or you know maybe you know some other market that the correlations haven't been working because everybody's just watching the stock market you know melt up and um and 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 no one wants to trade you know too aggressively 
one direction or the other in in our markets because they know at some point this is going to break and when it breaks it's going to you know create a whole um, mess of, uh, of of volatility so um, I, I think very you know in the FX space uh, traders institutions are having a hard time committing to any um, any type of you know counter trend moves or you know at this point in time after extended dollar declines you know committing any more to to aggressive dollar declines at this at this stage in the game so it's been a it's been a fairly ch challenging environment trying to you know trying to figure out what to do with the with the stock market moving you know higher the, the way it's going um, there's there's a couple things that I, I think we should uh, note um, first of all is the cable the cable has come off uh, a 78 percent retracement and it, it's been a very explosive move now this is the brexit move we basically hit the 78 percent retracement and then you can see the um, you know we're approaching a very minor trend line here but um, I, I you know, you got to be careful with here. I'm going to actually delete a few things. Uh, you know, we got a lot of a uh, lot of um, uh, lines here, so it's this is probably a good time, as good a time as any to clean up a lot of this chart. Let me get rid of a few things here. Uh, let's get rid of this this line right here. Get rid of this flag. The flags have been very. Um, oh, I didn't want to get rid of that fib, but that's okay. Um, Flags have been very, um, uh, very well respected in the pound on the way up. Okay, let's get rid of that for now, and take a look here. Take this low through those highs, and you can see this this minor trend line gave way, which has allowed for some some downside and and if the cable breaks through this minor trend line here you know might 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 allow for a move um a cable move to extend back down to you know 139 which is important because if you're trading like some of these crosses like some of these pound cross i'm going to take you over to the uh i'm going to take you over to the euro pound this euro pound was a really good uh, you know we were sitting there in the chat room last thursday uh I think it was Thursday or Wednesday when we talked about it, where the um, we we hit the um, um, very solid support down here at, at 87 pence, and it was also the 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 618 retracement, and we were just bouncing off of there. And I'm and I told a lot of guys in the chat room that day, I'm like, you know what, we should probably be buying the euro pound right now. I'm not long, but we should probably be buying the euro pound. And I didn't get long, which you know was obviously, you know, in retrospect, not the right decision for myself. But we've had a nice bounce higher. But if we're going to continue higher in the euro pound, I think a lot of that's going to have to do with the the cable. If the cable starts to show some signs of weakness here, uh, and we start to you know continue to break through this like 139 level and or you know 140 start to come back down to the 138.50 breakout point that could allow for the pound pairs to 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 ease it off a little bit so that euro pound might continue to bounce um, the pound uh, pound yen's already starting to come off a little bit where we have a, a an ascending wedge but if you take a look at the pound Aussie and the pound New Zealand um, Pound Aussie, that's a 618 retracement. Here, let me get rid of this really fast. That was a 618 retracement. We we rejected, so we made a lower high here. Here's a pound New Zealand, um, 618 retracement again. You know, we came out of this channel, but we made a lower high. So we might see these pound pairs ease off a little bit more uh, if the cable continues to show some weakness. Now, one of the other things that we've got to be thinking about too is if the pound continues to uh, the pound dollar continues to weaken. Will it bleed over into other dollar pairs? And even though the dollar, um, you know, I'm 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 still expecting the dollar to trade pretty heavy. Uh, the dollar, you know, maybe uh, gets a little bit of a continues to get a little bit of a bounce uh, into into Wednesday. Who knows? Uh, I just I think you have to be very careful about shorting the dollar right now, but also be aware that there might be some um, dollar 
you know, selling going into this, uh, going into this month. And I think that's, that's also going to um, be key. Um, are, are you still there, Dale? Just want to make sure. Yes, buddy. Uh, Brad asks, where do we see the week ahead video? Is it in an email? Yeah, Brad, you, sh you should get our um, our newsletter with the week ahead video. Uh, and, and if you are, let's see, let's see if I can show it to you. So well, if you're you on our- wanna, You may want to post the uh, YouTube link or channel. Sure. He could also, I think for everyone who's here who's not familiar, you know, a lot of people work. I know a lot of people that, can't always make it here, but they find the sessions they can watch on their own time. And there's a lot of great content that they could watch at their convenience. So, yeah, I just put the YouTube channel in the uh, in in the um, chat box, so you guys have it. It's it's there in the chat box. But also, um, you can if you go like, let's say you go to our blog, I think our blog's a place where you can do it, do it as well. Um, you can sign up for our newsletter, um, su subscribe to our newsletter right through here, and uh, just type in your email and first name and hit submit and you get, uh, you'll get our email, um, which every week we will post the, uh, the week ahead video, or you can go to our YouTube channel as well. Um, but the, the, the newsletter is great because it, it not only gives you the uh, um, the the video. It also, you know, there's a lot of analysis actually that comes on that newsletter as well, which is, uh, you know, uh, our team spends uh, a nice chunk of the weekend putting that together for you guys. So, anyway, I, I think uh, that should help you out, Brad. Um, he said it's not a membership email. Do I need to subscribe? Yeah, it's just it's it's just a it's just an email. It's it's you're not it's free um, to get our newsletter. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, the peso, which I'm not long the dollar Mexican peso right now, but we do have NAFTA negotiations wrapping up today. So we should get comments on the conclusion of how the NAFTA negotiations went. Um, the one thing about the peso, and I talked about this on the week ahead video, is that we broke below the 200 day moving average on Thursday. This was a very aggressive move. You can see it here. This is a very aggressive move. It stopped at, it, we, 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 we had like support. You can see it right through here. We were supported. Um, by the 200 day moving average, it was a horizontal support. You can see a horizontal support. And all of a sudden we plowed through that support, stopped out everybody. I mean, talk about just, just stopped everybody. Um, and then it reversed. And, and now we're, you know, we're obviously firming up, but that, that move was good enough to, to get a lot of, traders stopped out, which I love those types of moves. I love them because it's a flush out, right? Anybody who was long just got creamed. And, uh, and, and now they're all standing there naked without any positions. And if the dollar Canadian starts to move, or excuse me, the dollar Mexican peso starts to move higher again, they may be forced to chase back into the market and, and, and get long. So I, I'm keep a, keeping a very close eye on the peso today, especially following the, the NAFTA. Uh, commentary, you know, if we, if we, you know, this is their sixth round of negotiations. Um, you know, if it's not looking, you know, if it's maybe not looking favorable for for the Canadian and and Mexican economy, the dollar max could could start to bounce. We could start to see the uh, the dollar Canadian um, might break through like this downtrend line over here, which I think is pretty significant. Here you go. You know, that's pretty pretty important. If we break back above 124, we could you know see a continued squeeze higher in 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 the uh, in the Canadian and also the peso. So those are those are two that I'll be watching today, especially as the comments uh, wrap up from from um, you know the the recent negotiations that have been going on. Um, the dollar yen. Let's talk one last thing. I want to talk about this before Steve gets here. So the dollar yen. It, 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 um, the Bank of Japan, okay, had to go back and correct Kuroda's comments. And and Kuroda on on Friday when he was at the uh, at in Davos, he had mentioned that they have 
almost reached their inflation targets. Uh, I forget what his actual wording was, but the BOJ actually had to go back out uh, later on Friday, late Friday afternoon, and try to walk back some of Kuroda's comments saying that the, his inflation expectations haven't changed or the BOJ's inflation expectations haven't changed, blah, blah, blah. But the the damage was done and the dollar yen came under pressure along with all the other yen pairs. But then they bounced back after the BOJ comments, but you can see they've already eased uh, since then. And you can see like, here, here's a good, good example, the Euro yen spike, this spike up right here was because of the BOJ on Friday afternoon. And we've, we've come back down again and now we have to be very careful if the dollar yen breaks below this uh, this triangle support. And I don't think it's it'll be just a dollar story here. I think it's gonna be a yen story as well. So um, if the dollar yen breaks down, uh, you gotta start watching the Euro yen, pound yen, uh, Aussie yen, New Zealand yen, Canadian yen, which already, all those pairs already look like, here. like here's the Euro yen, you know, it's, it's you know, nearing some support. Pound yen is also um, nearing, you know, a little bit of support here. Aussie yen, it's been struggling up at resistance, making lower highs. The Kiwi yen, uh, same thing, making lower highs, and it's struggling as well. If the dollar yen really breaks through 108, 107.50, uh, that's gonna be, you know, my trigger to really start being more aggressive with these yen pairs uh, to the downside looking for yen strength. So that's something that, probably won't materialize today, but it's something that may materialize over the, the next, you know, a uh, few trading sessions. So with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Steve. Steve, are you, did you make it back? I'll take hey, it, Blake. Hey, me. Hey, Steve, you, you made it. How, how are you doing? Uh, I've been better. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're. Can you, can you speak at all, or? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I can. I, you know, I, I drank some uh, hot tea, etc., and you know, it, it, it helps somewhat. Well, um, let let Dale do a lot of the talking and answering, ask and answering some of these questions, and. Uh, no, your... I'm going to be. I'm going to be okay for uh, 30 minutes. It, it, it's okay. Of course, Dale, you know, uh, can always speak as much as uh, he likes, and how we we like to exchange opinions. But don't worry about it. I, I, I should be okay. I, I started on antibiotics as well uh, just now, so you know, within a couple of days, it should be okay. My my gosh, it's uh, the, and and you know, all I have to say is uh, sexy, Steve, sexy voice, huh? It's yeah, very <laughs> sexy voice. But uh, but as as you're gonna soon find out, as your kids, uh, your kids are gonna be bringing home all sorts of fun things for you to have. So and that's, there's a new virus out there too, Blake. I read about that. It's a, a Dano virus. It's so some. It's not the flu. It's actually a different virus. It's been a very, a very virulent flu season with all these different things going on. So you got to get rest, Steve. I'm glad you went to the doctor. And yeah. I'm glad we. I'm glad we got the room open. Thank you. <laughs> actually, I didn't. I didn't make it. The doctor seeing me. Uh, I just. Oh. I just left and went and bought antibiotics. I had already spoken with a friend of mine oh. that is a doctor, but we had the room thing, so I. I was still in the waiting room and left. But anyhow, I'm 95% sure I already spoke with my. Uh, yeah. With my friend. That, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. He's um, ear, nose, ear, throat doctor, uh, as you oh. call it. Yeah, okay. and um, you know, when I was a kid, I was uh, I was having like rather frequent issues with tonsillitis. So I know I know exactly how it is, and you know, I oh. saw it in the mirror as well. I told him, he told me, you know, what to what to get and how to get it. So you know, I'm I was anyhow 95% sure at the very minimum. All right, for, uh, All right. well, I, I I'm here I'm here to back you up. Okay. Yeah, thank so, you very much, mate. All right, so th good hunting today, Blake. All right, thanks, guys, and um, and and, and have Steve, a nice week. better. Thank you. Hey, it's 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 a process. Thank you, mate. Okay. Oh, um, oh wait, 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 wait! Before I go, um, I just want to make sure that you guys that are listening in, make sure oh, you oh. vote for us. Yeah, vote for us, and uh, for the for the um, for the uh, um, uh, best newcomer for FX Street Awards. Please do that. Yeah, uh, new new contributor. Yeah, I think oh, best yeah. new contributor. Yeah, I'm gonna put the link in a while. There, it's it's gonna take you only like 30 seconds. 
Thank Maybe you guys. Yeah, this it. year it's best new contributor. Next year it's best everything. <laughs> that is very true. Right. <laughs> uh, Blake, are you still here, mate? Y yes. One, just one thing before you go. Uh, let me take, uh, let me take the screen. I I have been saying about this for a long, long time, and I think it's very important. This is the Bund. What do you think about it? The Bund. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we're at a lot of support. Yep. But if that breaks, this is, you know, That's look at this. Looks like a descending triangle, and you could take the width of that triangle. It would take it down to the lows of what? 15. So, so the question now. is. Is, yeah, it's, it's going to be a big move. The question is, what are the, the general implications are going to be about it? Because this is a huge move, by the way, not coincidentally, obviously. Today, for the first time uh, after years, the five-year um, German bond has been trading once again above zero. Of course, we make it sound like an achievement, but think about it. It was trading below zero. The, I mean, you, you had actually to pay Germany. Uh, to own their debt up to five right. years in maturity until today. <laughs> and as it seems, we're now at a very, very, very critical uh, support. And I think that if we break below there, you know, a lot of things are going to be affected in the market. This is a 10-year-old. Uh, that uh, take continues 10 years. Right. Actually, it's a CFD of that, but I'm just saying so. And I think, you know, that's that's a very important chart. That's a very important chart. Very. So that's going to be probably very euro positive too. Oh, what is depends you know? on what depends on what the U.S. Uh, what the U.S. bonds are doing at the same time. But in general, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Something absolutely. to keep an eye on, especially yeah. so the, the longer term view of that. Just just look at this. This, this is a relentless uptrend, right? Right. It's an uptrend since the financial crisis, actually, in the middle of 2018. So it's. It's, it's already an uptrend that, that is almost 10 years uh, old. And this is the first time that we're about to start uh, to stop making higher, uh, higher lows. You know, Steve, I, I, Blake, I have one question. If uh, bear market in bonds was not bullish for the dollar, why will a bear market in bonds be uh, bullish for the euro? Well, um, because it is, 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 if, if boons are dropping, their, their yields are rallying. If their yields right. are rallying, it could be, you know, it could, it could push the euro higher as a result. But you know what and, I'm saying? Because we, you know, yields have gone up quite a bit here during a bear move in the dollar. That's a correlation that people lost, you know, tons of money on. Higher rates should have been translated into a higher dollar, and it wasn't. So it's counterintuitive. Uh, isn't it possible that the euro acts the same way with their bond market in trouble like the dollar did? Um, it, it could. I mean, it's, it's, it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. I, I'm just I, saying, you know, I think the initial gut, gut reaction will be, um, you know. Yeah, higher euro. It makes, yeah. you know, it's yeah. just more general for the euro that's already has a lot of people, you know, accumulating it. So, right. Okay. I was just curious because it was curious that higher yields did not help the dollar for a year. So we'll see if uh, it's a different story on euro. Yeah, uh, don't, don't forget, Dale, that, uh, you know, bonds, and, and sorry for, for keeping you longer, Blake. Um, don't forget, uh, Dale, that uh, bonds, Abdul is actually asking, how does bond down means euro USD strength? First of all, Abdul, you know, there is an inverse relationship between uh, bond prices and yields, right? So when a bond price goes down, the yield goes up, which means that in absolute terms, uh, bond moving lower means that uh, bonds are um, paying up, you know, a higher yield to owning them, meaning that they make sense. Germany, you know, is the powerhouse of the uh, European economy. Um, you know, they, they make holding euros, let's say, for example, more appealing or holding boons more appealing, which you have to do with, uh, you know, by, by purchasing euros. The thing is that, of course, any currency pair is a currency pair, which means that 
um, yields increasing uh, in one country or in one area uh, doesn't necessarily mean that that makes that currency more appealing because the question is what happens to another area because when you're holding a currency pair when 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 you own let's say euro usd it means that you know you're funding with usd your purchase of euros so for example if at the same time the us yields are climbing uh, at at a higher pace that means that still uh, boons dropping and yields increasing is not enough uh, to compensate which means that still you should expect a depreciation of the euro usd but in this case um, I'm just mentioning that we have, you know, a very key level being tested in the market, and of course, that because it's also a technical level, if broken, might accelerate the pace, uh, which means that it might accelerate uh, the pace for which yields are increasing, and that's something that we have to keep an eye at. Okay, that that that's all I'm saying here. Um, because let's be very honest, speaking about the uh, boons and uh, yields and uh, bonds in general, if, you, if we look at, which is something we expected, if we look at the US Treasuries as well, US Treasuries have already broken below an equivalent, very, very, very critical support area several days ago. It was this one, right? You can see it here. Although, as you can notice here, opposite from uh, the boons, which kept on climbing until very, very, very recently, uh, U.S. Uh, treasuries have topped like years ago, which means that this market is not exactly behaving the same way uh, the boon market has been behaving, which means also that boons might have some cuts up to do here. So, you know, this is something we have to keep an eye at. By the way, speaking of, uh, of the treasuries, Treasuries are, are actually, as we speak, testing, uh, testing, you know, uh, an important support zone. It's the 127% extension of this corrective move higher. Uh, if you remember, both Gregor and I were telling you that we're viewing this move up as a corrective one. You can see it very clearly. It's the nature of that move that made it, you know, quite obvious that it was a corrective one because, you know, you had a strong move lower and then an overlapping slow uh choppy move higher and now as you see we are again in a process of accelerating right so if we break below there the next support area is at 120 afterwards which is quite a lot lower from here it's the 161.8 percent extension of this corrective move higher okay so uh today we started by by viewing the the bonds so but uh, you know it's always a good thing to to keep in mind because bonds are very important. Actually, the bond market is like the uh, biggest market, I mean, uh, uh, especially com compared to stocks, right? Okay, uh, voted for Greg as well. Yes, and by the way, since you're voting uh, for Forex Analytics, um, I said it on, on Friday and, and Thursday as well, in the buy side analysis, it's another category. Greg, uh, he's mentioned with his uh, given name, Gregor Horvat, is also uh, nominated for that category. I strongly um, believe that, you know, you should vote for him. I mean, I know some of the other guys, all of them, you know, everybody nominated there is is, is good. There's no question about it. Uh, but yeah, Greg is my preferred choice as well. Not only because we work together, because not only because he's, you know, a great person, but he, he is magnificent in what he does. Honestly, one of the best I've ever seen. <clears throat> so, um, Dave, I got a question on Twitter. I don't know if you want to go there later, but someone absolutely, was asking, there's no problem. Tell me. Someone was asking me why does Brent crude? Why is it acting weaker than WTI? Do you have an explanation for that? You showed the charts, and w, uh, Brent doesn't seem to have as much of an ascending angle as w might might be the case i'm not an i'm not a, i'm not an oil analyst yeah, i can okay. tell you that their spread I, I can i can give you some general information very general information simply because uh you know from time to time i happen to have read some articles on financial times but you know i'm not even trading both of them whenever i trade i, I trade the wti i have to be very honest with that uh but i can tell you one thing for sure is that their spread has been oscillating 
through the years and in many, many of these occasions, it had to do because don't forget that Brent is a different type of oil. It's get, it gets extracted at a different area. So it has different, it's also thinner, it's, it's better quality oil. Uh, so they have their own dynamics having to do with demand, supply. Sometimes whenever we have wars um, and we have issues with transportation in the Middle East, uh, you know, one might be affected more. I mean, the whole point here being is that, yes, they are obviously very strongly correlated with each other because they're both oil, but they do have their own dynamics, which uh, makes their spread, um, you know, widen or um, um, close down by a lot. That, that's all the information can give you without okay. starting to go into inaccurate territory. Okay. Um, speaking of, of oil, uh, since the conversation went there, we, we are obviously still uh, very bullish because we, we are in this uh, steep ascending channel. But keep in mind that the 50% FIB of the whole move lower is uh, just a few cents above where we are. Also keep in mind that COT shows us that for every short position in crude at the moment, we have 12 long positions. Let me repeat that. The analogy of uh, long to short positions are 12 to 1. You can easily understand that there is nothing wrong with that as long as they don't start taking profits because then the snowball effect will begin. What I'm trying to say here is that positioning in crude is so extreme at the moment that any kind of a trigger, any kind of a catalyst that will begin sell-off will likely cause all these longs or a big part of these longs to start liquidating and then it's a process that you cannot easily stop of course it's going to stop in the sense that crude remains bullish but the profit taking process when uh, when um, positioning is so, so extreme can easily uh, you know create a very sharp correction lower meaning you had plenty of opportunities and, and we were biased long in the vast majority of, of the time that we spent from the lows to here. Our, our actual target was at 62, 63. We've already like overshot it for a, a bit. Um, you had plenty of opportunities to want to be long uh, crude, but this is not the place to do that anymore, right? Because the risks uh, for sharp correction lower are very, very high. Uh, so there is absolutely no uh, reward to risk ratio to, 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 to attempt, to even attempt to be long here. I'm not saying that crude cannot move higher from here. I'm saying that buying it up here makes no sense. It's bad trading. Okay. Uh, if we see a move lower to retest this high, for example, at 59, or even uh, we go down to 55, you know, these are going to be excellent opportunities to start looking, uh, you know, for, for some technical formation, some candlestick reversals to, to start buying a crude once again. But up here, it, it, it's, it's really nuts. Okay. Let me, um, okay. Uh, by the way, let me, uh, Dale, help me a little bit because I had things to do when I, I came back. Um, uh, Blake, uh, what did Blake cover from the main FX pair so I don't go over them again and we can uh, watch other things? Uh, he was talking about the pound pairs a lot. Um, Okay, so I'm going to leave that since he's talking yeah, about it. Yeah, not so much about uh, the euro pairs. Okay, so. okay, okay. Uh, let's let. So Abdullah let's have a look. About, let's like, have a look. Kiwi and uh, and and uh, sure. Blake to cover it. Okay, sure. Okay. Uh, uh, let me go. Uh, let me go over first of all. And the kiwi, and then we're going to go to that. Okay, Aussie truth here. Why? Because it's a tri triple confluence of resistances, right? I, I even wrote it at the, at the weekend uh, analysis. This thing has already overshot by a lot, you know, what we were expecting. Uh, but the fact that it doesn't change as when we were looking for a turn a little bit lower here at 80, that this is not a place to be long anymore. I mean, only after a correction or so. This is a triple confluence of resistances. Why? Because first of all, we have this descending trend line. You can see how, how long it dates, right? 
dates back to 2013. Second of all, we have this ascending trend line. As you see, this could potentially be a larger correction to a very big move lower, right? So this trend line might prove of significance, right? So third, it's the previous high that we had there. Fourth, we are currently testing ascending, a very steep ascending channel resistance. Once again, we tested it on Friday. And it's overbought and we're seeing RSI divergence. Right. Yeah. Um, also, keep, also keep in mind um, the nature of the move higher, which is undeniably very strong, should not necessarily in such a market intimidate you so much. Why was the nature of the move the lower just before much different than this? No, it was also a sharp move. And that was also a sharp move, right? And if we go further back, that was also a sharp move. And that was a sharp move. That was also a decent sharp move. I mean, as you see, uh, you know, the Aussie has really, really given very sharp moves in both directions since it found the bottom. Uh, okay, in 2016, at the very beginning of 2016. <clears throat> so I'm watching what's going to happen from here because, as you see, many things confluence uh, roughly from between like 81, 20, and let's say 81, 50. Let's have a look at the Kiwi. Kiwi, not, not so many confluence of resistances as you see, but we still have the 78.6. We have RSI divergence. It's overbought. It hits right to the PIP uh, ascending channel resistance here. Um, so as you see, also more or less an equivalent situation. Of course, Kiwi has to clear the 73.20 area to the downside to, you know, to even start looking for a move lower towards 72. Now, um, having to do with... Okay, having to do with the stock market, uh, there's not much you know anybody can say. We had another sharp move higher on Friday. We're now approaching the 200% extension, of, uh, uh, an Andrew Spitzfork that we have been monitoring since years ago. Years ago, I remember I had this Spitzfork up since somewhere here, if I remember right, somewhere in 2015. So I, I think I have it like almost three years. Uh, uh, on my charts and you know from falsely breaking below it in the 2016 correction we are currently once again about to test its 200 percent bullish extension the rate of, of appreciation you know has been just staggering um i don't know if you saw it because i know i know he he's your friend peter bookvar isn't he isn't he your friend um dale yeah yeah he's yeah peter is a friend uh let me read you something that he wrote two days ago which i couldn't agree more uh than that i mean i think it's one of the best statements well, i've seen recently great minds you know they think alike yeah he, peter peter right two days ago i don't care if you are bullish bearish or indifferent but if you are not in awe of th what this market has done of late you have little understanding of market history and behavior that's so exactly strong. what he wrote. Yeah. Yeah. So bottom line, you know, doesn't mean that this market cannot move further or whatever, but if you can't comprehend uh, the extreme nature of this move, you have little understanding <laughs> of market history. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not normal. Yeah. No. People, it's yeah, not, you know, People think it is that have been around. No, it well, look, if you just started trading a couple of years ago, Bitcoin seems normal. <laughs> right? yeah, so you have, in Bitcoin, sense. you have parabolas, you know, you have parabolas all over the place that people probably think, well, that's just what happens. People, uh, markets start trending up and then they all go parabolic. 
when it's really the exception, right, Steve? I mean, parabolic moves are probably what? Less than 5% of the time in market history? Yeah, and it, they always end in the same way, right? Yeah, always. I don't, yeah. like Niagara Falls. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, uh, just wanted to add one, th one thing on stocks. Uh, the thing we have to remember is that these uh, equity markets, especially the, like the S&P, they've been on a completely constant buying uh the trend for almost 10 years now, it's since 2009. Yeah, it's almost 10 so, years, isn't it? So you have people uh, who have been nearly 10 years in the market who only know this. And I know this from people I used to work with a long time ago in the city. And, you know, they tell me we've got all these, these relatively new people, but they're still like five, six, seven, seven, eight years experience who have experienced nothing Never else. Never seen it yourself. Yeah. Exactly. So they don't know. They don't yeah. know how it's going to work. They don't have any experience of that. So that will exacerbate the, the effect when it starts turning, whenever that is. So just one more thing to, to consider when things start turning, they're going to get very wild, I think. Yeah. So just remember. There's no question about it. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, euro is moving lower. A friend of, uh, of, of ours here is mentioning. Keep in mind that the first support for the euro is at 123.10. Uh, then below that, we actually have, uh, you know, 121. Keep in mind that there is room for correction. We, if you remember, we were saying since a long time ago, we were watching this as a support zone, which is exactly where we found the low so far in the DXY, this 8850 level, because, you know, we call it <clears throat> so far. Yeah, but it's, yeah. It, it's, it's too early in, in the sense that, yeah. you know, for me to start thinking that, okay, you know, we might see like a stronger move higher for the dollar. I would really want to see first target, first objective break the 90-10 area and even more importantly, break the 91 uh, area to the upside. I want right. to see 88.32 into the Fed on Wednesday for a buy, one more low. And Steve, uh, just, you know, we were talking about this irrational exuberance. Yeah. Take a look at the Russell. I mean, I'm long TZA right now with the bearish ETF, and I should have been buried. And it's really, um, really is a great tutorial that if you diagnose relative strength and weakness, that even if you're early, it's forgiving and you don't get killed if you diagnose what short the relative weakness or by the relative strength because the weakness won't accelerate. So, I mean, take a look speaking, at that Russell compared to the S&P and Dow. Yeah, yeah, it's underperforming. There's no, no question about it. Although, you know, it remains bullish. But on the other hand, uh, we might have a three drive formation here, as you like to call it, first of all. Yeah. And second of all, there is a potential of an ascending wedge within this uh, bullish yeah. ascending channel. Right, you can see this. Yeah. Uh, but of course, uh, for for that potential to play out, it's got to go down. Uh, yeah, got got to go down from roughly here, and definitely right. for any kind of confirmation in the Russell, we really need this 154. Yeah. Six fifty area, let's say 154 50 uh, to break to the downside. Right. You know how many S&P points it took to finally generate that breakout? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, in percentage, plenty. it took more than plenty to generate that breakout. Absolutely. Okay. You're absolutely right about that. You're yeah. absolutely right about that. Yeah. By the way, Dow Jones, between all of them, the most ridiculously parabolic by far has been the Dow, has been the Dow Jones. Just, just look at this. Yeah. Just, just look at this. It's, it's literally, literally just, just look at the move we had from the lows, right? Look at okay, the this is the bull market. Yeah, the, this, this is the bull market. This is the bull market that we had. Just, just look at the, just, just look at the rate of the moon. Yeah, and, 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 and keep in mind, right? I, I've never seen that to any index. The weekly RSI at the moment has surpassed 92. The monthly RSI. is at 90 and a half, right? I mean, these are RSI readings, in all honesty, that I only remember having seen in these kind of timeframes on cryptocurrencies, not, 
nowhere else before. And that 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 probably should tell you enough. I don't remember the USD yen hitting in long-term time frames this kind of RSI uh, after uh, Kuroda and Abe, you know, came into power and started the huge depreciation of the uh, uh, JPY and the huge appreciation of USD yen. Let me see now questions because okay, we have questions about the knock, the sec. Let's have a look at them both. The knock has been relentless, relentless. I mean, we called the high there uh, quite successfully, but really, I didn't expect that the downfall is going to be like this in in, in speed and momentum. I mean, uh, we we are hold, we are trying to hold the previous lows here, trying, but you know. Uh, we, we are obviously in, in sell the rally mode, right? So any kind of move that we get to any resistance, I think should be sold for the And the next target is at 750, which is the 127% uh, percent extension of the last corrective move um, higher. By the way, if you, if you have a look at the weekly USD knock, you can easily understand that things have completely changed here, right? And you can also easily realize how far in the longer term this pair can retrace. Let's have a look at the USD sec as well that a friend wants us to. Uh, Steve, you know, you yes, know I everybody I think follows me, uh, follows us, knows I've been a very big knock bull, but I've been, uh, you know, gobsmacked by the speed of this. It's been amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing. It's probably, it's probably is amazing. going lower. It's probably going lower. Yeah. By the way, guys, yeah, uh, you know, like, nothing moves in a straight line. But... Uh, looks like uh, I yeah, have a no show for a guest today, which completely okay. astounds me how anyone would pass up an opportunity to be interviewed by me in face. I, it's mind boggling. But maybe something happened. That is actually very true. Yeah. Anyway, I'm having an interview drawdown today. He got, I got stopped out on my interview. <laughs> and and he, 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 he's, he's or her loss. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and here's the, the equivalent picture for the USD sec. Okay, and, and you can see here the importance of the area we are about to break lower from, right? And as you can also see, there is also a lot of potential for more downside. If you look at it, there is really no strong support until this high there, which is like at 733. 733 is like 7.5% lower from here. More than 7% lower from here, anyhow. Uh, we have a volunteer for an interview, Tio. I'm into spontaneity if you're serious, Tio. I'll talk to you. I talk to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to anyone. <laughs> I'm a lonely guy. I'll talk to anyone. No, that's far, far from true. Uh, Trump saying strong dollar, does that mean anything? Thanks. Uh, William, Trump says strong dollar, uh -huh. does that mean anything? I will answer that to you. <laughs> it, it, means, it means something only, only mm -hmm. if it translates to some actual change in policies, right? Because the market doesn't mostly say about what Trump says or uh, Mnuchin says or whoever else, but you know the market cares mostly about what kind of actions are being taken and how those might translate, uh, you know, in uh, in economic activity in, and then in any kind of uh, sector anyhow that affects uh, you know an exchange rate so for the time being it was enough to cause a reaction and it makes sense because anyhow the dollar was oversold etc uh, but i will have to tell you that it's not going to be enough on its own to stop the dollar's downtrend i do believe that as we talked last week that many of the stabilizers that an economy has and uh, many of the effects of such a rapid currency depreciation, and it is a very rapid currency depreciation, considering that this is not, let's say, the South, South African run, but 
theoretically speaking, we're talking about the world reserve currency, right? Uh, I do believe that sooner or later, uh, the effects of this depreciation are going to come back and cause uh, an appreciation again of the dollar. Now, to what extent depends on on many circumstances, but definitely, uh, you know, th this is not a trend that can go on forever. And there are a lot of things that can actually reverse it. Stelio, by the way, can you put the link for people to vote on uh, uh, on the chat, please? Yes, of course, I'll do it now. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Euros and Euro Kiwi, we have questions. Let's have a look at them. Okay, as you see, Eurozi had the potential of a very nice inverted head and shoulders formation. That's why I, you, you know, you should always wait for necklines to break because this didn't happen on, the, on a daily closing level, right? We got rejected, so there goes the potential of an inverted head and shoulders formation. And as long as that trend line doesn't break, then the potential of this being a bearish consolidation is increasing right if you remember i was being asked by a lot of people that were trying to pick the bottom here if they're actually bottoming and they told you in both cases i remember of the euro crosses and the pound crosses that uh you know we have some signs but in order for us to have confirmation for example i remember very clearly saying that in the euros this 61.8 which was also this low and this area above it, for me, are very important, very critical. Then we got this very nice inverted head and shoulders formation. Obviously, a break with momentum above the neckline would be a very good signal. But in, instead, we got rejected from there. So now we, we are back again in saying that, OK, we are between a very strong support area, this 152, and uh, which means that you know uh, we might find support once again there. But on the other hand, we failed to prove that this was a significant low. So uh, I, I should caution, and that has to do with all the euro and pound crosses, that you should remain a little bit more patient. It's better to have to, to, to wait for more price action so we can get a better understanding of what kind of information is that. Probably those of you that have been watching the show for. Uh, months, you, you, you've heard me say multiple times that corrective moves can prove to be complex and at the very beginning there is absolutely no way for you to know how they're going to unfold, right? You need in many occasions a lot of price action to determine the nature of uh, um, corrective moves. Uh, this applies in this uh, case as well, and if we go to the Euro Kiwi, you will see that more or less the same applies here, right? Uh, he, I was watching this also as a potential triangle, you can see here, we never managed to close above it. Um, and as long as that's the case, there is there is uh, the chance that we're going to do this, break the blue trend line and continue lower. Would that make me bearish? Probably not, I would need more, because this was a decently established uptrend and yeah sure if the channel holds even better for the bullish trend but we could move even lower from here and then if by the any chance we get a uh, one more low in the dollar and this euro kiwi gets up to your 61.8 that would be a case in short in my view yeah uh, for me only break above this area that's why i marked it like this actually yeah. there is one one line missing here and it's this one right because so these are all the right shoulder up there so these these are the scenarios for me here yeah which means we I break above the triangle we, yeah. we go to the 61.8 if we get rejected look lower if yeah. we get above it then i think we're headed to new highs right. now if we never break the triangle and uh, to the upside and we break into the downside then i would be looking for a move down to 161 Okay, so there is no, nothing wrong with having two or three scenarios as long as you know when and where each one of them uh, gets validated or invalidated, and as long as some of them can potentially offer an appealing reward to risk ratio so you can actually trade them. There is nothing wrong in 
waiting in such a choppy price action and doing nothing until you actually get something that makes you quite comfortable that you know now what's going to happen next. Okay. Dale, I would uh, I would love to go on, but my voice, you know, yeah. probably, yeah. Okay, well, I, fi I finally got, a, you know, a response on Twitter. Um, someone that works for Bitcoin Manager is trying to raise him. So I could take some questions for a while. Absolutely. Give him five minutes. So stay, stay just perhaps can, can, can answer some things for, for, for uh, people asking as well. Uh, but I, I'd rather rest my voice a little bit now. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I know you 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 have an opera that you're singing tonight. So yeah, exactly, go, <laughs> exactly. Go rest <laughs> your voice, and uh, I hope you feel better, buddy. Okay, thank and, you, man. Fidel and I will take over, and we'll answer yeah. some more questions. And see you see you all tomorrow. Okay, Steve. You could just pass me the uh, screen, or I could do it. So guys, I'm here. Done. Uh, thank you. I'm here. Um, you know, Steve's analysis is great. Uh, wheat and corn. I, I don't have the wheat and corn uh, t to up here. I could. I could probably do it. Let me look here. W Z. Wheat futures. Nothing's coming up. Invalid symbol. That's because I didn't add a. I've never actually traded these, so I don't know what the symbols are. Does do you need to add like the uh, the future? The, the like year problem. Uh, let's go with uh, March. So H. And and it's eight, probably the year. So I'll try yeah. that. See if that works. There we go. Ask and you shall receive. Wow. Yeah, I don't know about reaching for it here, but you know, when I, I interviewed the goddess of grain, I forgot her name, but she talked about the Chinese have been stockpiling a lot of wheat. So they're preparing go to monthly. Okay. That I could do. So it's just starting. All right, so I don't have the spot, but yeah, six. That's a heck, heck of a candle for January. So buy breaks. Okay. Corn looks the same. Get rid of this. Go to corn. The beans have a good look too. You know, I'm I'm personally uh, long-term bullish uh, commodities, precious metals, yeah. so every, all these. Uh, one reason is because the dollar is dropping, and you know they've already started, but the the you know dollar could go further. But another view, I know this uh, this probably goes back to the thing where they go where they say oh, in in the um, in the long term we're all dead, but. You know, you have a the commodities and you know wheat and grains and all that. This eventually is going to become a um, uh, a limited supply. You know, something which is a limited supply. So, you know, that will um, uh, that will come into effect. And uh, I, I, you know, medium term, I'm very, I'm quite, I'm quite bullish overall. Well, there there is a weather development, and uh, I'm here in California. And last year we had El Nino. We had a lot of rain. And now we have La Nina, which is the opposite still. And I've seen many weather markets during La Nina years in the Midwest. So um, here's the soybeans. It's your monthly. Let's just go to a daily. So they look uh, they look pretty good as well in a basing mode. So we could have weather markets along with the we uh, with the weak dollar. You have China accumulating grains. You can't eat gold right yeah. uh, we do not have big carryover we cannot afford a bad weather uh, a bad crop here and I think in South America they have problems first before we do because it's their summer or now probably headed towards their fall so so the grains I think are going to be a great long-term hold and 
trade them from the long side. Um, they could even rally with a strong dollar because I've seen it. So I'm very constructive on those as well. It's dry. Okay, so TO knows it's dry in Argentina. They're big soybean producers in Argentina and wheat. So yes, uh, grains look good, TO. And also, you know, price shocks in these kind of instruments, these like grains and wheat and all that, they're always positive. You know, it's you can't have suddenly a huge supply or something. Like that. There's always some kind of event that that reduces supply. That's the thing, you know, weather events or whatever it is. Right. So and being, being being short these, you're kind of like short an option uh, in case something happens. Yeah, and, and you know, China can't afford to. Have, uh, you know, we went through this. I don't know, around ten years ago. And there, there's actually huge civil unrest when rice prices went out of, uh, you know, did a moonshot. So the Chinese are doing this, um, not just because they think they can make money being long and holding wheat, it's to quell the potential of civil unrest if there is a supply shock. So good eye on that, Tio. So grains look good. I think that they could, you know, there used to be a war chant on the Chicago Board of Trade, beans in the teens. Well, you know, if you look at them, they've been there before. So I think uh, the last real big bull market, and it doesn't show it here, but we have been in the teens. I think we got to $15 beans and, and wheat was, I think, got up to $8 or so. So I would need a continuous chart. You're on the right course there. Anything else FX-wise you guys would like from us? I'm not sure that we're going to have a guest today. Let's see if they responded. No. So um, we could That's wrap okay. it. Yeah, these things happen. It's okay. Okay. So we could wrap it or we could stick around for a few more questions. Up to you guys. Going once, Euro Swiss. You want to take that still, or I could take it. Yeah. Euro Swiss. See if I even have it here. Oh yeah, I have Euro Swiss. Okay. Well, Euro, Euro Swiss has been um, has been coming down a little bit recently, last uh, couple of weeks, but um, I think. The, the 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 target is what Steve said months ago, actually maybe a year ago, and he said he thinks he's going to go back to where the floor used to be, and I still think that's the case. Um, before then, we we you know we make another decision which way we go. So I I still think even though there's a correction recently, if you put a gun to my head, I'll probably buy it, um, and uh, you know with a target towards the um, the one twenty x floor. Okay. Uh, and then from there, you know, from there is a different story. But I'm looking at the medium term, you know, I'm not looking at, you know, a day right. or two or a week ahead. Yeah, because uh, short term, uh, starting to get a little divergence, but I don't like readings under 30. So uh, my advice would be if you're looking to do something counter trend, you need it to do a little work, maybe rally, and then put in a, a lower low with a higher RSI. Uh, divergence reading is what I teach. Uh, preferred reversals are going to happen above 30. I hope that helps you, George. That makes and, a lot of sense. Okay, uh, Euro Yen for Abdullah. Okay, on the daily, he's calling it an ending diagonal. This is the daily. Believe that's a four hour. There's a daily. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, it does look heavy to me. You know, this was a big breakout. I remember Blake caught this move up here. Uh, uh, I remember that day. I know it's strange that I remember that day. He actually had it to the pit. And then we negated the breakout, then revalidated the breakout. Looks like this time we're going to... Uh, revalidate the breakdown, the false breakout. So that looks pretty heavy to me, Abdullah. One more push higher. Yeah. 
I'd sell rallies here. You know, maybe we get, maybe this is a second drive here and we get a bounce, but it looks pretty negative to me. I guess you could use 135.40 as a pivot to risk, or if it got back up there, that would be a great shot. That'd be a great short. I, I am personally, um, uh, I want to sell Euro Yen, but okay. I am going to wait. You know, there's, there's a chance that, um, you know, with things going well in the Eurozone and the ECB turning more hawkish, there is a chance that the market will go in and price, you know, earlier action. Okay, they're stopping the QE, what is the end of September? They said that uh, rates are going to stay the same uh, until well past the end of QE. But there's a chance that things, you know, might continue being well. The Italian elections maybe will go well um, and uh, the market might go in and price um, a much quicker path of action. And I, I would love to sell the euro yen on a, on a rally if something like that happens. I actually have a chart. Let me just take the screen for one. one actually, uh, uh, Stel, go ahead, take it. And then Jamie did show up here. So I'm going to interview Jamie. So. Oh, okay. Okay, right. uh, I'm just going to show this then. I just need a minute and the yep. uh, interview. Sure, sure. So, so this is my long-term chart. This is a monthly chart, as you can see, it goes all the way back to you know the 90s. And um, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to short euro yen. I've been, you know, the the, the euro has obviously had some good strength in the last uh, couple of months, a few months. I would love for it to get to this. Um, uh, resistance confluence of the 38.2 from the big, big rally up from you know 2000 until uh, 2008, and uh, and that descending trend line. So that which I've marked with the, the circle, I would love to, it to get there, and that's where I'm going to go short. But obviously, it's some while away, uh, it's uh, some distance away. It might not get there, granted. But as I said before, you know, if the ECB changes, uh, you know, comes out a little bit more hawkish, you know, drag is going. All that, you know, it, it might shift the market's um, view just for a bit and to go from 135 to 139, whatever it is, you know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a huge way away. So that's what I'm um, currently waiting for. Um, and that will be a great place to short, I think. At least I'm going to do it. Thank you, so, Stel. No problem. Okay, uh, Jamie, I see you in here. So are we ready? Uh, are we here with the, with the guest now? Yeah, well, what's better happening? late than never, so okay. I'm making you the presenter. So you have the controls. <clears throat> I'm waiting to hear your voice and you can share your screen, Jamie. This is Jamie Holmes at Bitcoin Manager at BTC underscore manager. Hi, Jamie. Just waiting to hear your voice, see your screen. You're not muted, so just waiting. You're the presenter, you could show your screen and we're waiting to hear your voice. Just go the volume control and unmute yourself. There's your screen, waiting to hear you, Jamie. So there's also a audio control in there. I don't have you muted, so you should be able to speak if you could find it. Yeah, on the right side, there's a, on the tabs, there's an audio tab and it has uh, controls in there. So Thank you. I, I, okay, I hear you now. You're pretty echoing. Hello? Yeah, hi, Jamie. Hello, I, Jamie. I don't, know. I don't know about you, Dale, but he's breaking up a lot. I can't hear anything. Yeah. That's what I heard, too. Okay. Jamie? We'll reschedule this. Yeah, there seem to be connection problems. I can't hear a thing. Yeah. Okay. 
we'll reschedule this for Jamie down the road. Everyone, uh, I'll see everyone for, we'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Thank you. Don't forget to vote for us on FX Street through the Google link as best new contributor. You're very welcome, Tom. See everyone tomorrow or see you in the chat. Thanks for trying, Jamie. See you, we'll Dale. Have a good one. You too, Stell. Thank you, buddy. Cheers. Cheers.